Hey there, and welcome to the video. If you're new around here, I'm Machine Builder, and I love to create add-ons for Minecraft Bedrock Edition, and I'd also love to help you to do the same. So, in this video, we'll go over how to set up a home system using a couple new scripting concepts so that you and your friends can teleport home whenever required in worlds, realms, or servers. But before we get into this, I'd like to mention I have a Discord server with a truly awe-inspiring community, so you look how inspiring these messages are. So don't hesitate to jump in and join the discussions. Also, feel free to request any video ideas you might have, there's a link down there in the description box below, but now let's hop into this tutorial. So heading over to our add-on kitchen, once again, I love this place. So before we get started, please know this tutorial is based off the scripting beginner tutorial. If you haven't seen that video yet and don't know how to set up a behavior pack, there should be a link somewhere up in that corner. So go check that out before this, because I will be skipping over the steps that were covered in that video and will be continuing as if we just finished that one. So in this tutorial, we'll cover how you can create a home system for your add-on. This is intended to teach you a couple new scripting concepts. These are world before events, and the differences between before and after events, and then also dynamic properties, and then how to set or get them for a given entity. And know the dynamic properties can also be stored on the world, but we won't use that functionality in this video. So a quick interruption. Let's take a look at this fun little graph right here. You see that? Yep. That like 80% of you guys or something are super lame. It says right there on the screen, see? Super lame. Come join the really not lame people below you, and you can join the not lame people by smashing that subscribe button down below. I know you see it. Okay, okay there, enough of that. So, hopping straight into the code, one thing we need to do for this tutorial is change our script version into beta scripts. So the way we can do that right here is the version, so if we change this to 1.8.0-beta, and if you need to know the script versions, you can head over to Waveplay's script API NPMs, there will be a link in the description. Simply click server here, wait a little bit and you can see stable beta, the latest version is 1.8.0-beta. So one way that we can check if an event is not in stable is we can search for it here. So I want the chat send event. You can see these are all beta, there's no 1.7.0 stable version here. If I were to do something like player breaks block here though, you can see we have all these different versions available. So we do need the beta version for chat send. One thing we will need to do in our world is if we edit it, we need to enable beta APIs because we're using a beta version of the APIs. So without this, our code would not work and the game would not let us run this. So now that we have that set, we can head straight into our main.js file. So this is a new file, just empty in the scripts folder. Same way we set it up in the beginner tutorial. So the first things we'll need are system and world imported from at minecraft forward slash server. So these two things are just main classes that will give us access to everything we'll need in this tutorial. To initially test our system, we can use world.beforeEvents.chatSend subscribe and then we take a function with an argument, put it in there as the callback function. So this function will be called every time someone sends a message or technically before they send the message. So now if I were to type in world.sendMessage and then say echoing and then plus data.message we should now see a message in chat before we send our message, but right after we press enter. So heading back into our game, if we just type slash reload, let me go and type something, you can see we see in the chat echoing hello. So this is a great example and it means that our world.send message is working. Or rather, not only the world.send message is working, but that we're actually listening to the event and before it's happening. Now, another fun thing we can do, because this is a before event, we can type in data.cancel equals true. So what this does, it prevents the original message from ever being sent through, but we also still echo the message. So let's try this now. So upon the world, reload, and then type in something else. Hello, it says echoing hello. This is a test, it'll say echoing, this is a test, and our message never gets sent through the chat because we cancelled it. So now what we can do, removing these because they were just for debugging, we can first get some values from our data. So this is the sender, so this is the player who sent the message, and then we can also get the message as data.message. 
So this will just allow our code to be a bit clearer without having to use data dot every time. So now we can check the message type. So this is essentially filtering if the message is dot home. Also, the reason we have to use dot here and not forward slash is because forward slash are technically not chat messages. So they're not registered in this before events at all. So we couldn't detect them. So now we have our home listening system set up, but you'll notice we don't have any code to set or get homes. So we need two new functions for clarity. These will be called get home that take a player and then also function set home that also takes a player. And the reason we don't need to pass a location in here is because we'll just use the player's location when we set it. So for get home, we simply want to return property dynamic property. And then here we have an ID. So this is a namespace, which is MB in this case for machine builder. And then we have a colon and then the name of the property. So I'll call this home. Now let's quickly take a minute to mention what dynamic properties are. So dynamic properties can be stored on entities all the world, and they allow you to store certain values of data like numbers or locations in a simple key value kind of dictionary, so to speak. So we can then access that later from the player directly without having to store it somewhere else and then bring it in. So for setting the home, we can simply go player.setDynamicProperty, if I could type it would help. Oh my goodness, set dynamic property, MB home, and then we have player.location. My autocomplete is not working. There we go. So now we're setting the property to the player's current location when this function is called. Now what we can do, we can listen for another command, else if message is equal to dot home set. So this is used to set the player's home. We can then run the function set home sender. And then we can go const home location equals get home sender. And the reason we need to define this separately is because this might be undefined. And if home location is undefined, then we obviously can't teleport the player there because they haven't saved a home first. So to do, we want to send a feedback message here. For now, we'll get back to that later when we'll add feedback messages to the whole function. So otherwise, in this else statement, we should teleport the sender. So we're gonna go sender.teleport home location. So now this actually won't work as is, and you'll see why, but we'll run it first so that I can show you. So if I slash reload in the game, and then type in dot home, you can see native function entity teleport does not have required privileges. And so what required privileges are, is before events only has read only privileges. So event callbacks are executed in read only mode. This means that we can't teleport mobs, we can't set blocks, we can't do all those things. So what we can do to counteract this and elevate the privileges, so to speak, is use the function system.run. And then this takes a function in here, just like this, and we can just move all of this code in here up to here. You also don't need to define a function like this, you can just do the shorthand version like that. So now this should work, this part here, and then we can test if this one works too. And if it doesn't, we'll just have to change it like this one. So reloading our game, if we run the dot home command, we should see nothing happens because we haven't ever set a home. If we run the dot home set, now we won't get any feedback yet, but hopefully that worked and we can test that by running dot home again. So now we should teleport if we're somewhere else. And you can see we do teleport to the home location that we saved. So now it's time to add some feedback messages so that we can see what's happening. So in here, we can run sender.sendMessage and we can say, you have not set a home location. So this means that the sender cannot teleport because they have no home location. And then in here, we can say, saved current location as home. So you can see these are just feedback messages for the player so that they know what's happening. So if we're in our world and reload, and then we type dot home set, it says saved current location as home. Now, one thing you also notice is that our chat message is still sent. So we can go ahead and cancel those. Canceling a chat message is very simple. All we have to do is like earlier, where we just go data.cancel equals true. 
and then I can copy this and paste it down here as well. And really, since these are very simple and clear statements, we could just move them up to the top of these blocks instead for clarity, so that we can see most of the bulk is below, because these are the same per function. So this is simply just a neatness kind of thing, and it allows the code to be more readable later. So in our world, just reload again, let's test to make sure our home command does not get sent to the chat, there we go, saved current location as home. So that player.send message only sends it to the player who ran the command instead. So no other players will see that you're setting your home or going there or whatever. So if I type dot home now, we get teleported back to our home. So let's add one more status message for teleporting back. So this will just be teleported to home location. So now one more touch up we can do in here is add color codes. So this is the color code symbol for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. And then what we can do, we can type in a letter or a number that corresponds to the color that we want here. So I know that the error message color is that light red, so you can do that with C. So that is this color here. And then teleport it to home location, that should be a success. So we can do an A. And then here we can also do an A because this is also a success. So this is the only one that's really an error, so to speak. So now in our game, slash reload, we can type home set. You can see it's now green, saved current location as home, and we can type in .home, teleported to home location. So you can see all of that is working, and if we just double check that I use the right color, that's the C1. So you can also test these in game by just typing different letters and numbers and seeing what they show up as. Or you can always go to a list, there should be a link somewhere in the description for color codes, if I can find one. So just head down there and you'll see that. So let's take a step back into the add-on kitchen to go over what we've learned in this video. So we've subscribed to before events, we've cancelled before events, we've elevated permissions using system.run, and then we've saved variables to dynamic properties, we've also teleported players, and then we've also sent feedback messages. So these are all very useful things that you can reuse in your scripts and wherever you need them. So go ahead and make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and leave a comment for any future video suggestions, add-on creations or various concepts you'd like to see me work on. Make sure to smash that subscribe button down there so you don't miss any future videos like these ones. Thanks for taking the time to make it this far through the video. I cannot express enough how much your support means to me. And don't forget, I've got some very cool new scripting tutorials lined up for the next couple weeks to come.